Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we're going to be back in the A320. We are on the latest development version of the A32NX mod by Flyby-Wire. Uh, it was updated just before starting the simulator. Um, so if you guys are interested in that, um, there is a uh, link in the description below on where to get it. As well as if you are interested in learning how to fly the A320, I have created a guide that I think will be very beneficial to someone who is new. Sorry for bumping the mic there. This guide walks you through everything from installing the A32NX all the way to creating your flight plan in SimBrief to um, going through a cockpit tour of the aircraft. Um, <clears throat> going through all the different panel switches buttons that you guys will need to interact with setting up your weights and balances all the way through uh, entering your flight plan if you want to do it manually um, and as well as creating the flight plan in the um, uh, simulator itself the, the flight plan in the guide takes you from Tucson International all the way over to uh, Los Angeles International it's about a 45 minute flight time so just long enough to make sure that you guys have time to read the guide and sort of follow step by step through it takes you through um, a turnaround state for the shutdown all the way to cold and dark um, it is extremely detailed everything's image um, really the only thing that you need to use the guide is the guide itself it walks you through absolutely everything um, so if this is something you guys are interested in, you guys can acquire the guide by either A, um, making a PayPal donation of $10 or more. Um, the link can be found in the description below, as well as subscribing to the Patreon site, which is $10 or more for Tier 2 or above to get the guide. Again, Tier 2 or above to get the guides. Um, now, I do recommend the Patreon over the donation at this time, simply because I am also in the process of getting a G1000 and G3000 guide out in the same format. Again, it will be very detailed, screenshots and all, everything pointing out what uh, you need to do. And then following the G1000, G3000, we'll be also doing a guide for the TBM 930 as it uses the 3000. So um, anyway, just a recommendation, but if that's something you guys are interested in, um, again, those links are available down in the description below. So let's get into today's flight. Today's flight, we are going to be going from Miami over to Princess Juliana. Um, and uh, I've always wanted to try that approach. I, I think it's just a cool looking approach. I've watched hundreds of YouTube videos on it and I've never actually tried it myself. So today we're gonna be trying it for the first time. It is an RNAV approach, so we're gonna have to manage the glide slope on our own. Um, so this should be interesting at the very least you guys will see uh, how terrible of a pilot I really am um, So stick around. I'm sure you'll find some humorous moments in it The one thing that I do do with my videos guys at least I try to do as long as they don't take too long um, Is I leave my mistakes or anything that I have to overcome in the video um, So if I enter something in wrong and have to edit things you guys will see all that in action So without further ado, let's go ahead and get the aircraft powered on and then we'll go into creating our flight plan in sim brief all right, so jumping into the seat here, let's go ahead and come up top and let's flip our batteries on, get that external power rolling, set our air conditioning, get that crew oxygen supply going, turn on the wing lights, the nav lights, get the emergency exit lights armed, and the seatbelt signs on and no smoking signs on. All right. So from here, we'll go ahead and leave the fuel pumps off for right now until we fueled and weighted the aircraft. Um, once refueling is complete, then we'll go ahead and fire up our fuel pumps and the APU. Let's get our ADIRs on and aligned. I do have them set for instant alignment. I hate waiting for the alignment process. So let's go ahead and now come down to the forward seat. Let's uh, brighten up our displays a bit. Get everything where it's nice and legible. Oops. That beeping is our alignment coming on cam displays, co-pilot displays, standby ADI, and let's come down to the MCDU or MCDU. Alright, so one of the things that we can do right off the bat, let's go up to options for a second. And if you go to realism here is where you can set your alignment time. Okay, so you can see there it's set pretty short. Oh, sorry, that's a self-test, excuse me. Go to air gears over here and you can see where I've set to instant. I was just about to question myself. It's like I thought I had that already set. And then what I want to do is go to AOC here. And we can set our Metar source. Now, Metar source is where you can get your weather information. I use Pilot Edge. Pilot Edge is a third party application that you can use if you want to practice real world traffic, um, air traffic control. Now, 
where this comes into play here is, let me be more specific here, they are real-world air traffic controllers that um, um, donate some of their time to Pilot Edge. And uh, they will treat you just like a real air traffic controller. Uh, they're pretty good about answering certain questions, but you don't want to use them necessarily as a training source. You want to have a general knowledge before you get on, but that's not to say they won't help you. Um, my first time ever dealing with ATC was on Pilot Edge back in X-Plane, and they were always very kind to me, so uh, just keep that in mind. But however, if you do certain things like busting your altitude, you know, going either above or below the altitude that you were required to maintain, um, sometimes they'll tell you, hey, you know, you need to either restart or cancel your flight plan. Um, but they do give you certain options. But it's a really cool, it is a paid subscription, but uh, very realistic, very awesome. Okay, um, so I use Pilot Edge to get my Medar source. Um, so we'll leave that there. And then let's go ahead and make sure our SIM brief is set up. This is the SIM brief integration that is now available in the development version. You can see my username is entered here. I don't think user ID is required. Um, I tried to populate this yesterday, just messing around with it, and it didn't let me. It's, it, no matter what I put in there, like if we put ABA, you know, just for example, you know, it doesn't do it. It says not allowed. So I don't think that's something we have to worry about just yet. So I'm just going to leave that as is. So let's go ahead and return. And now we're going to go to the... Um, flight management guidance computer you can see our barometric pressure is set in um, inches now here's the other cool thing so one of the things I had to do every time I entered my information flight in the uh, sim brief is I had to make sure that I set it to kilograms because that's what the McDo on the A320 uses you can now change that by coming to this menu here and so you can see I have it set to pounds that we don't have to worry about it. our acceleration decel altitude is set to 1500 feet you can alter this as required um, I leave it at 1500. That seems to be the standard for the United States. All right, and that's all I'm going to worry about for today. And so now it's just a matter of hitting return again. Oh, nope, we're where we need. And go to the FMGC and we're at the main page. So now let's go ahead and get our flight plan created. All right, so we're going to come over here to Simbrief. And we're already there, so we're going to use Delta Airlines. So. Delta Alpha Lima, and we're going from K Mike India Alpha, and we're going over to. I always mix this one up. Let's see here. Tango, was it Tango November Charlie Mike, I think. Oh, seems to be. Uh, oh, oh, what did I do? That's what I did wrong. I was like, what? What is this? And let's make our flight plan or flight number 1365, sure. And then, yeah, I did this wrong. So, Kilo Mike India Alpha, and then going over to uh, Tango November Charlie Mike. There we go. And airframe, I'm going to be using the profiled, uh, or the uh, profile built by Fly-By-Wire. I'll have a link to this in the description below. And how you add this is log into your SIM brief through your browser. Then on a separate browser page, just click the link I have in the description below. It's going to be a very long link. They're ridiculously long. I'm sorry. Um, but uh, just click on that link, and it will automatically add it and ask if you want to add it as long as you're already logged into SimBrief, okay? And again, guys, just for any, so anyone who doesn't know, uh, SimBrief subscriptions are free, okay? So you don't have to worry about any kind of payware there. The only payware you have to worry about is if you want the current Air Rack data, and in which case it requires a subscription over to Navigraph, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and move on down here. Um, let's see here, cruise profile, climb profile is good. Fl uh, fuel factor, it tends to really overload me with fuel is my experience with uh, SimBrief. So we're gonna go ahead and reduce it. Now I've never flown this far before. I think we're going just over a thousand miles. So I'm just gonna set it to minus 30%. Basically, whatever number it wants to give me, it's gonna subtract 30% of fuel for that. Um, passengers, um, let's go ahead and make it a relatively full flight. Let's see here. Let's do, well, not relatively full, I guess. Let's do 137 passengers. Cargo, let's set it at, uh, let's just shoot one out here. Mm, we're just going to that Windows one location. So let's do uh, 7,700 pounds of cargo. Make it pretty light on the cargo today. And let's see here. I think that's all we need. So let's go ahead and hit generate OFP, operational flight plan. Now, once this part is done, here's where we'll test the integration with uh, the A32NX. So we're going to stop here. Normally, I would print the PDF preview, but I'm going to leave that for a moment. And let's get back into the seat. So coming back into the seat here, now we're going to go ahead and go to the initialization page, or init. 
and there's an A and a B. We're going to start with A, and you can see it's entered in our um, destination and our right, or a departure and destination, and then our alternate. We can set that, and I believe that is. Give me a second here. I'm looking over at our flight plan. It's going to be TJSJ, so Tango Sierra Juliet. Tango, oh, nope. I knew that was wrong. Tango Juliet Sierra Juliet. Throw that in there. Our flight number, we're going to do D A L. I should have set our cost index, but that's all right. D A L 1365. 1365. And you can put really whatever call sign you want up here. You know, I could put overkill, productions, whatever I want to put there. All right, and then the cost index. So here we're going to come to our flight plan for this. Looks like airtime is about two hours and twenty-five minutes. That's not too shabby. Cost index of five. We're going to go a bit higher than that. Okay, so that's going to determine how much fuel we burn. So we're going to set a cost index of about thirty-five. Come on, there we go. And cruising altitude, they have us going up to 37,000 feet today. I mean, it is over a thousand miles, so I'll go ahead and leave it. I don't mind. That's fine. That's quite a climb out. All right. So now let's go ahead and let's see what's in the IRS initial instrument. Oh, okay, gotcha. That's our alignment status. Gotcha. All right. So now let's check out the flight plan and see what's got for us. Now it didn't enter in all the waypoints, which I thought the integration had resolved. Um. Hmm. Go to the menu for a second. I think I want the AOC menu is what I want. So typically your flight plan, so everything with the exception of your departure and your arrival routes, um, the would typically be entered via data link. Um, we'll come back to this page. We are going to need to get in there, but um, I'm curious. Go back to the main menu here. Let's go to the options page. AOC sim brief. Yeah, that's right. So I thought it would enter in the rest of our flight plan, but maybe not. And this is the other cool thing. So you can enter in your change your unit weight. So normally the Megadoo on the 320 was in kilograms. You can change it over to pounds. Our barometric pressure in inches. I might have already gone over that. This is like my third time trying this recording because I kept having weird technical issues outside of the simulator. So if I said that already, my bad. All right. Well, I'll mess with that later. Let's just go ahead and just keep on going for now. And if you guys can hear my tantruming three-year-old in the background, I'm sorry. It's nap time, and she's disagreeing with us. All right. Let's go back to the initial position page. All right. We got that. We're good there. So now let's go over to the flight plan page. Let's set our departure. And let's take a look at what we've got today. So I'm going to come down to the routing. Here we go. So we're going direct over to skips. So let's select our runway. And we're coming off of runway 30 today. So we're going to use 30 there. And then we're not using any SIDS today. So we're going to select none. And hit insert. And then from here, next waypoint, we can just type SKI. Papa Sierra. I like me going back and forth between phonetic and not. And then give it just two seconds. Don't ever let this decel throw you off. If you just wait a minute, the decel will move down. Just like that. And we can hit insert. And then now we start getting into a bunch of airways and waypoints. So we're going to be jumping on from skips. We're going to be hopping on to the BR-53 Victor and going over to the uh, Zulu Quebec Alpha, jumping on to the A-555. Um, taking that to Idaho, from Idaho jumping on to the Route 6, going to Sierra Tango Tango, from Sierra Tango Tango jumping on to the Bravo 520, taking that to LARP, and then from LARP, I'm not going to use an airway, or, or uh, yeah, I'm not going to use an airway, and we're going to fly direct over to Gouda, jumping on to the Ulaba, Ulaba 1, and taking that uh, all the way down into the airfield. So, let's go ahead and start setting some of this up. So what we're going to do here is we're going to select skips, go to airways, and now we can enter. So airways are going to be on the left, waypoints on the right. 
So we're going to be going from BR53 Victor. So Bravo Romeo. What's that? Oh, sorry, 53 Victor. 53 Victor. Throw that up there. And we're going to be taking that over to Zulu Quebec Alpha. Okay, and then from there we're going to be jumping on to the Alpha 555 and taking that over to the Idaho waypoint or fix. There it goes. From there we'll be jumping on to the Route 6. So R Romeo Tango Echo 6 and taking that over to LARP. Lima Alpha Romeo Papa Papa. Uh oh, what did I do? Is that right? Oh no, sorry, that's going to be going to the Sierra Tango Tango. That's nice that it caught that, so that was kind of cool. So it basically told us that that airway doesn't connect to the waypoint that I had entered. So that's good. That's a good uh, tip there. I'm going to have to do, I'm going to reproduce that and put that in the guide. That's a good tip. I didn't realize it did that. That's neat. All right, and then from there, we're going to be going to the Bravo 520. And we'll be taking that over to LARP. So Lima, Alpha, Romeo, Papa, Papa. Put that in there. And from there, we'll be going direct to Gouda. So G, Oscar, Uniform, Delta, Alpha. Now, when I enter this, as long as you don't get an error, you're good. Notice that it didn't actually populate. Okay, that's not uncommon. Now we could have typed DCT here, but you don't need to. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So don't don't worry if your waypoint isn't there. So from but it's a good place to hit insert once this happens. So hit insert. And then what we can do is scroll through. And there's Gouda. And then we've reached our decel point, and now we can work on the arrival. Now normally we'd probably wait on the arrival until we actually get to the airfield, but that's fine. So on the arrival, we're going to be coming in on the RNAV-10. We're going to be using the Ulaba-1. Now here's what's where I want to hit. We want to make sure we use no vias, because... This part gets a little confusing for me because I'm going to show you guys what's going to happen here in a minute. It threw me off last time. And worst case scenario, we're just going to... We'll adjust it. Darn it. Stop. My mouse keeps tripping. I think my battery's dying. So here's Gouda. All right. Here's that final waypoint that we just saw. So this should be coming on to Gouda, jumping on to the Ulaba 1, okay, and taking it down in, right? But... The problem is, is that if I select Avaya, it does something really weird. Even if I select Gouda, it still wants to put in this Donde, which drives me BS crazy. So I'm going to try no Vias. And you can see transition still puts in Donde. So I'm going to put none. And it makes me go through some of this again. RNAV. There. And look at Donde's back, even though I told it no. So it drives me crazy. Why none? There we go. So now we should have what I'm looking for. And so now let's check our flight plan. And how we're going to do that is change our rotary here to plan. I'm going to leave this at 10. You want to leave them pretty close together. And then we're just going to start typing forward. Stepping through the waypoints, we're looking for weird backtracks, any discontinuities. A discontinuity would be like a break. The green line would be missing between this waypoint and this point, waypoint. That'd be a discontinuity. Um, any weird, like for example, if we had, if we were coming down here and all of a sudden there was a waypoint that went way up here and then back down, that's something you want to watch for. So far looking pretty good. It was getting into the arrival where things got weird for me uh, previously when I tried to record this. So there was Sierra Tango Tango, so we're getting close. There's LARP. Yeah, see, here we go. Sorry, looks like it's going to do something weird. And I'll bet you it put Donde back in there. It totally did. It put Donde in there, even though I specifically told it not to. Yeah, it's unbelievable. So, um, 
that could just be any old issue. But you know what? We'll leave it. I'm not too worried about it. It still brings us in. Worst case scenario, we line back up. The other thing that we could do if we want when we get to Gouda is we could just change to direct or we could do manual flight heading. I mean, it's really not the end of the world. Um, we can avoid this manually. So not, not, not too much to be concerned about there. Okay, so we are done entering the flight plan. Let's continue with our weights and balances and then we'll uh, get the aircraft out of here. All right, so let's talk about weights and balances. Let's take a look at that. So we're going to scroll here. Well, here, let's go to fuel. Fuel's going to be on the uh, first page here. So we're looking for 15,457 on our guests today. So let's go ahead and throw that menu up here. By the way, if you guys ever don't see this menu from the cockpit, all you have to do is mouse over and drag it up. So I'll show you what it, you probably, you may see something that looks like this. If you see this, mouse over, pull it out, and you'll get it, okay? All right, so we want pounds and total gas on board. We're looking for 15,457. So I'm gonna pull this back a bit. Not 13, that's too much. 14, 15, 123, So we're about 100 pounds high. So what we can do here is just See here, this would make that one, 190. Same thing for the other side. All right. Uh, oh, what did I do here? Did not catch my nine. There it goes. All right. I was like, what? 15,443, and we're looking for 457. So if you're really that concerned about it, we can make this like a nine. Normally, when it gets within 10 pounds or so, no matter what we're working with, I don't worry about it too much. So we're going to leave that. 455 is good. Um, and then cargo. Let's check our cargo weight. We'll come down here a bit. There we go. Total payload is what we're looking for here. So 39.1 thousand pounds. And max payload, we're at 20,000. So we're going to go up quite a bit. There's 32. And what, we, what did I say? 39.1. Yeah, we're going to be running a bit heavy. Ish. 60. 59. 39.7 is what we're looking for. 39.1, sorry. So we need to knock off about 500 pounds. So, for example, let's go ahead and just take this. Uh, was business class? Now let's work on the kit, uh, baggage. Take that down to three. All right, so there's our weight, 39,120. That's close enough. But now we're still running a little forward heavy. So what I'm going to do here is take about 3,000 pounds off the front baggage area. So take this down to 6,000 pounds. And then on the rear baggage area, let's put it up to 12,000 pounds. And that gives us a much better center of gravity. And you can see the plane sort of bounce there in the background, bouncing us out with the seven center of gravity being 24.7. So that helps us out quite a bit. We'll go ahead and close that up. And now we can go ahead and set this back to arc. Back to 20 for departure. Set our initial altitude up to uh, 18,000. Well, we'll do 10,000 feet to start. Um, I do not use the in-game ATC. However, I did buy pilot to ATC um, and been working on getting that configured. So, you know, soon we will have some sorts of ATC. I've just been working on getting it set up. It's pretty impressive the way it works. All right, so now we're done there. I am noticing a little bit of lag, but you know what? I have my graphics uh, shot through the roof. So if it becomes a problem, I'll uh, pause the recording and adjust my graphics settings. All right, so let's see here. Um, we need to go back to the initialization page. Now we're going to go to initialization B. We can just tap and configure our center of gravity once we have our weights. This is why you do your weights and balances first. Block fuel, we can come up here. You can see there's 15.3. And what we had on our sim brief, though, I thought was higher than that. That should be 15.45, so that's interesting that it didn't fuel us the way we thought. Um, let's call the fuel truck, because I'm thinking that we didn't fuel up. So I'm just using pushback helper to actually call the fuel. Let's see if it's actually calling. It's the problem I've had before, so let's do this. Go to ATC, ground services, tune ground, that's fine. 
We want fuel supply. The fuel truck is on the road, okay. So it says we have gas coming. And so this is what I see, though. So this happens to me a lot. The other thing is I'm running into, and I don't know if you guys are, and if you guys are, please let me know in the comments below. I have my aircraft, ground air traffic, ground air traffic, gosh, set pretty high, and it never populates the airfield. It doesn't matter where I am. I can't ever get any other aircraft to populate. Like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Um, I don't think I have any mods that would impair that. So, But, and then the other one is, no matter what I do with the fuel truck, it never shows up. So, like... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Anyway, so hopefully it fuels the bird. Let's go back into the cockpit here, and yep, still showing 15.3, but that's not correct. So I'm gonna type our 15.4, and hopefully that works. We don't have a problem. Luckily, we carry enough fuel on board; it shouldn't be an issue. We're gonna wait a second while all the rest of this calculates. Boom! Done. All right, and so we have everything else that we need set. So at this point now, it's just a matter of setting up the performance numbers, and we're ready to get out of here. All right, so apparently something interrupted my recording, so I'm going to catch you guys up real quick on some of the things we did here. So you can see here, we went down to our, after we entered our weights and balances in the initialization B page, we went over to performance. We selected flaps one. I'm not using a flex temp today. We're just going to go toga today, so maximum thrust on takeoff. Transition altitude, 18,000 feet, always in the United States, then entered our V speeds, 1, 2, and 3. Once we got V2 complete, 137. We moved up top to the FCP, and, and we are going to enter 137 plus 10, which puts us at 147. Now, this is not a requirement. The reason why airline companies do this and different airlines do this is they find they get a better climb out rate. Um, by going 10 knots above V2. Okay, we put it in the speed box. I know the speed is managed by the computer. We put it in the speed box in case for any reason we had to manually take over control of the aircraft, um, is my understanding. I could be wrong. Set my initial altitude up to 10,000 feet. We sent our barometric pressure 3009 from Miami right now. Now, let me show you where we got that because we actually got that from the A320. All right, so let's walk through that real quick here. All right, so coming on down to the MCDU, we're gonna go MCDU menu. First, I'm gonna go to options. I'm gonna go to AOC, meter source, or METAR source, excuse me. I'm using VAT SIM today. Now, I initially had it on Pilot Edge, but Pilot Edge actually gave me no return, so I don't know if the server's down or what's going on there. But by switching over to VAT SIM, it worked out just fine. You don't have to enter any credentials or anything like that. It's just, it's what server it's reaching out to for the uh, METAR information. So now let's go ahead and go over here or meet our information, excuse me. And then now we're going to go back to the main menu and we go to Atsu. Okay, go to AOC menu, weather request. You can see it's already got our departure and arrival airports in here. So just hit send. Go back to AOC menu and you can see you got received and sent messages. We're gonna go into received, but you wanna give it about 15, 20 seconds. Okay, so do, 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 great, we waited. Come in here. Now you can see this one, two of them that I've already tried. This was my Pilot Edge and this was the last one I tried when I thought I was recording. And there's nothing there. So now watch this back out for a second. And we have new, there we go. So click on this and there's our meet our information. Okay, so KIM uh, Miami. Uh, this is just the time in Zulu. Uh, this is your uh, wind speed. So we got uh, 300 at three knots. Uh, visibility 10, few clouds at uh, 4,600, few clouds at 25,000. Um, I don't remember what 17 and 06 are, 1706. I don't remember what these are. Um, and then you get used to reading these after a while, and, I, and I'm still obviously getting used to it. But here's the big one, altimeter, 3009. Okay? And we get the same thing down here, down below. We can actually scroll down. Okay? Um, and then you get your Q&H of 1011. Okay, so because they're using uh, hippopascals, which we'll change the altimeter to later if we need to. All right, and uh, that is it. So again, a really neat feature. I do already have the screenshots and everything necessary to put this into the guide. It's just a matter of getting it done. Um, so the guide is going to be uh, updating once again. So make sure you guys are on the lookout for that because it's going to be pretty cool. All right, and let's go back to our flight plan page now that everybody is caught up. And now it's just a matter of, so the aircraft is fueled. 
We are programmed, we're set and ready. We're going to assume the boarding process is completing as we speak. So now let's start getting the aircraft ready to taxi out. All right, so first thing we need to do is come up top. Again, we are refueled, so now it's time to get our fuel pumps up and running. And start the APU. Turn that beacon light on, let everyone know we're getting ready to get rolling. Okay, so master switch on, APU start switch on. Coming down, you can see down here, the APU page selects automatically until the APU is up and ready. Once the APU is available, like if you start looking away, working on other things, um, once the APU is available, it'll switch back to the doors page. So that's a good indicator. All right, now let's go to the back here. We're going to simulate. We've contacted ATC. They've given us our squawk code. We're going to set our transponder into auto or on. I typically just use on. And we're going to say our transponder code for today is 4052. Okay, TCAS will remain on standby until we are cleared the ramp. Same thing with prediction weather or prediction wind shear, predictive wind shear, excuse me, and the um, weather radar. We'll go ahead and lock the cabin doors for our security to make sure we're good to go. We can set the engine master mode over to ignition in preparation of engine start, but we're not quite ready yet. Make sure our gear is down. Auto brakes we can set to max in the event of a rejected takeoff. And other than that, we are set to go. Set our rotary back to plan, or excuse me, sorry, arc, and then bump it up a bit. Um, I typically use 20 or 40 for takeoff. We're going to go constraints on, flight directors on. Constraints on, flight directors on. And give me just a minute, guys. I'm actually stuttering pretty good here, so I'm going to mess with some graphic settings and I'll get right back to you. All right, that seems to be a little bit better. We'll see how things go. Okay, so actually, disregard that, it switched over to the engine page when the APU is available. But now we are ready to get rolling. So let's switch over to the APU power. So we're going to bring the APU bleed on. Give it a second to take over. And we'll go ahead and disengage external power. Clear our jetway. There it goes. Now normally we'd wait until we heard um, from our guys before we disengage the parking brake, but if you don't, they'll just start dragging you. So I disengage the parking brake now, and let's start our pushback. Taxi to the left. Nope. Taxi to the right. Other left. <laughs> and from here, we can go ahead and jump back into the seat and start engine two. We'll start the chronometer. Time the engine start. Stop the push back here. Reset the parking brake. Oh, it looks like I lost my custom camera views. What the heck happened there, guys? Come on, man. Uh, I reinstalled. That's why. Well, shoot. All right, that's fine. All right, engine two's ready to roll. Let's go ahead and start engine one. Re 
reset that chronometer. Sounds almost too quiet. Hmm. All right, both engines are started. Engine master mode back to normal. Flaps one set for takeoff. Speed brake or spoilers armed in the event of red jet to takeoff again. And other than that, everything is set and ready to roll. We can now turn off the APU bleed. Turn off the APU. Taxi light or nose wheel light to taxi. Board clear of white and blue, we are good to go. Go ahead and set our predictive wind shear to on. Oops. Or auto. TCAS to on. Or transmit receive. All right. All right, and now let's. Taxi out. Oops, if I get rid of that parking brake. There we go. I forget the parking brake every time. We can go ahead and reset the chronometer. We don't need it at the moment. And we're going to be looking for runway 30, which is just off to our left here. I'm getting a bit of stuttering. I'm going to have to play around with some graphic settings later on. Runway two seven. Should be able to come over here and cross two seven to get to three zero. something messed up my sim connect because my navigraph isn't working correctly so sort of fighting that uh oh I don't think I want to go here we did not well told you guys I'll leave my mistakes in here as well so let's turn her around screwed that up I wanted to exit up there Yeah, Sim Connect isn't running for some reason. That's interesting. Alright, so we're going to cross 2 7. Nothing coming down.
this should be 3-0 here. Alright, so let's see here. We're going to go strobe lights on to auto or on. Landing lights on for takeoff. Runway turnoff lights. Nose wheel light takeoff. Chime to cabin crew. Takeoff configuration. Cabin crew is for takeoff, please. Alright, we're going to set 50%, verify that we're stable. Come on. Alright, 50% ish. Start that chronometer. Max power. Nose forward. Passing 80 knots, letting off on the nose stick and the flight stick. There's V1. Rotating. V2. Wheels up, nose coming up 3 degrees per second. Approximately. Approaching flaps retraction speed. We're going to hold our course until we clear the runway. Flaps coming up. Autopilot on. Thrust levers back to the climb position. And we're on our way. Yeah, she's a little stuttery today. Interesting. Same settings I had before. I'm going to have to see what I played with. I suppose that's not true. I did play with some things, so... Yeah, she's a little stuttery. That's alright. I wish I had my camera views. Oh, that was a dramatic pitch. 18250 knots were under restriction, speed restriction, until we breached 10,000 feet. Looks like we may be under an altitude restriction, we'll see. Oh, no, she's still climbing. Now that the holidays are done, I'm going to start looking for a 3080 or 3090 series graphics card. Now that I might actually stand a chance of getting a hold of one.
It's pretty awesome. We doesn't look like we're under altitude constraints, so why did we stop climbing? Let's just look into rejoin the flight plan first, which doesn't exactly make sense, but that's alright. We'll see what it does when we get on point, and if it doesn't do anything, I'll make it. Yeah, nope, I'm thinking we just stopped climbing, so let's tell her to get her butt in gear. There she goes. That was weird, I don't know what stopped it. Don't chew on ice, it's bad for you. And we are out far enough that I think I'm just going to go ahead and set our cruise altitude. We've made it far enough away from home plate there. We're just going to send her all the way up. 10,000 feet lights off. At 18,000 feet, we'll switch to uh, standard barometric pressure. Other than that, we... Uh, we wait until we get to our top of descent, which we are ways away. We've got uh, about two hours of flight time here. It's the first time I've ever flown over open water like this for any extended period of time, so it's kind of fun for me. See, and this would make me think that we're under constriction. I'm going to let this sit for about another 10 seconds here. If we don't get climb, You know what? No, I'm not. We're going to go to open climb. So I'm going to mouse down arrow like this. 
and force her to climb. So I'm not sure why she's holding. Now, I don't know if... I mean, obviously the last patch was a major patch, so that may have introduced some bugs that we're just not ready for. Let me see what happens when I put it back into manage mode. See the dot there. And it's climbing like crazy now. Let's see what it does when we get to transition altitude. But we are above 10,000 feet now, so we can go ahead and clear our lights off here. Oops, I hate that so much. Okay, everything else can stay on. We go up to 80 miles here. We got a ways to go. Let's see, there's our first waypoint there. That little uh, carrot there or tail indicates the approximate location at which we'll reach our, reach our cruise altitude. All right, I'll see you guys for the transition altitude, and then uh, after that, we'll be back at cruise, and then uh, we'll be back at top of descent. All right, so we're just passing uh, 18,000 feet. You can see that uh, altimeter is blinking, indicating it's time to switch. Oop, that just switches to QFE. There we go. Give it a pull. And now we're on standard altimeter, and so from here, it's just slow and steady all the way up to cruise altitude so I'll see you guys in a few alright so now sitting in the cockpit you can actually see yeah about 220 or so maybe a little less give or take actually probably more like 200 easily um, actually it's probably more about 180 so we're going to take this to back down to 160 and what we can do is come down to our MCDU and we're going to first check our radio navigation, verify that we have the VOR frequency set. Now you notice that nothing's currently set here, excuse me, at all. So what we're going to do is pull up Navigraph here, and we can do this in a number of different ways. You can Google uh, the approach plate. Gosh, another update. I literally just updated this an hour ago. I hate this thing sometimes. Um, and just the only thing that upsets me is there's no way to disable this that I have found. If there is a way and you guys know it, please tell me because it drives me crazy. That's great that they update that frequently, but man, don't be a pest about it. All right, so we're gonna go to the approaches here, and we're looking for RNAV runway 10. Let's see, we have ATIS on 12765 approach, 12895 final approach cross. So it looks like we don't have an RNAV frequency is what I'm looking at. So I'm seeing anything here. Descent. Got the descent profile at Ibaki. We want to be at 2,600 feet. We'll have to keep that in mind. But, oh, well, there we go. Looks like 113.0 is what we're looking at here for the VOR. missed approach. We're going to want to make sure we take an eye on this too, because it's possible we'll miss this one. Uh, we're going to be climbing right turn to 4,000 feet, direct to on bed. Let's look over here. 26.1 nautical miles out, and then hold as directed. So we would fly out here to on bed, then come back around, re-enter the traffic, since we're not using ETC. Alright, uh, but it looks like our VOR frequency is 113.0, so I'm going to go ahead and enter that in. So 113 we'll go ahead and drop that up in here out of range oh, okay so hmm well maybe we don't get one let's try is it a VOR throw that up here yep all right so it's a VOR that's fine we expected that well it does that makes sense it's not an ILS station I don't know what I was thinking there that's a duh. No brainer. And then our final approach course we see is supposed to be 095. So we can go ahead and enter that in. So I'm just going to type 095 on the approach course. There we go. We 
we got that set. We could set frequency 2 for VOR2 if we needed to um, as our... Actually, I don't see that it has one for the missed approach. Oh, missed approach fix. Hang on. I've got that thing in my way. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, no frequency that I can see here. I could be bringing it wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. And then we can look at our minimums, too. So, let's see, we're not using L, well, are we using LNAV? Let's see, 2500 MDA, 700 feet, what's this? LNAV, straight in landing, that's what we're doing. Standard. I'm going to go with this one here, I hope I'm not reading these wrong. These is where it gets kind of confusing, like LNAV CDFA, LNAV CDFA. Oh, this one's got the 1 next to it, so I'm not sure if that's a something I should be referencing somewhere else, but I don't see that really would help. Oh, right there. One missed approach. Restricted maximum 205 knots until established on on bed. Two VNAV. Alright, so I'm thinking that we should be using the VNAV then. So we're going to use 770 uh, as our minimum. So let's go into performance. And what we're going to do here is just set up our arrival information. So we'll go to performance. And we're going to do next phase until we find the approach. Not going to worry about the Q&H yet because we need to wait till we get closer. Same with the winds, but we can set our transition altitude. Um, I believe it is 6,000 feet. That's what this would be out here. So actually, let's look. And so all I'm going to do is type, it says Juliana International Airport. And I'm going to look for a transition altitude. flown out of the U.S. before, so this is all new to me. It's got my runways. This, this is actually pretty handy. I'll throw a link to this in the description below in case you guys want to check this out. This is pretty interesting. So this is the link I selected. It's got all of our comm frequencies. It's got the fuel that it's got there. Jet A1, 100 to 130. Or 100 through 130. Got the runway degrees, lengths, thresholds. Here's our approach plate. This is exactly what we're doing here. Well, we're actually going to come over here and come back in unless I redirect manually, put aside here. This is St. Martin 113.0. That's the missed approach, it looks like. It's got us coming out, or that's departure, is what that is. So that's our departure. Have here is Jefferson International. This is another departure. So these are the departure plates. Pelican One. This is the airfield itself. Definitely have to back taxi. Alright, well then, you know what? I'm just going to leave it at 18,000. I guess it's no harm, no foul. It just changes when we set the altimeter until I can find out further information on that. But just take note that might be incorrect for this particular location. Um, and then we did 770 feet. Well, I guess why would we change the... Why wouldn't that be the standard 200? Anyway, I'll throw that in there. Alright, approach speed is all set, 132 knots. I'm going to bet that's going to be fast, but alright. Uh, why is the trim changing? Alright, so we are at 160 miles from destination. And actually, I guess what we could do, I mean, that's what, about 40 minutes away, it's not too bad. So let's come down here and let's get our Q&H again. Oops. So I'm going to go back to the main menu. I'm going to go back to Atsu. Go to AOC menu again. I'm going to do weather request. And I'm just going to hit send. 
it's queued, sent. Back to the main menu here. Should give us a message saying message received. I'm just going to wait a second and see if it does it or not. Doesn't look like it's going to. Oh well. Alright, so we're going back to Atsu, AOC menu, received messages, new, and QH. So here we're going to have to page up. 1012. So what we'll do here now, we can do this a couple different ways, but it's just what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to options, and we're going to go to FMGC right here, give this a change. Go to HPA, go to return, and now I need to go back to my ads because I forgot what that was. <laughs> go back to receive messages, go to the newest, scroll up again. 1012 is what we're looking for. Oops. And for the moment, well, we can leave it there for now. Um, and then, see, we're at 37,000 feet, so we need to set our final destination altitude. So we're going to set it all the way down to the bottom. She shouldn't start descending yet. But what we can do is go back to our performance page to our next phase. I'm going to be keeping an eye on this because if it starts descending, I want to change it. QNH, we decided it was 1012. We're going to drop that in there. And I can actually go back to that page and get our weather and winds. I didn't even think about that. I don't know why. Nope, she's descending. No, 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 no. Ah, yeah, I'm sorry. Apparently that was a mistake. I didn't think it was supposed to descend until we told it to. Or until at least it reaches its top of descent. It hasn't even done that yet. Hmm. If I start rolling it now, I'm going to bed. Yep. Nope. Hmm. All right. Well, it is what it is. Okay. So let's go back to receive messages. Back to viewed. Come on. Come back. And we want our winds and weather. So that's our time. So zero five zero for four knots. How can you be at zero five zero? What the heck is that? Alright, I'm going to look it up on Google, because that's not making sense to me. Alright, so what is it? TNCM4. Alright, so I just Googled it and pulled it up. we got temperature of 250, and it's actually 2988 on the uh, uh, Q&H. So I'm going to go back here. I was playing around with that, but I think I'm going to leave it here get back to where I had it. Uh, I'm in the wrong menu. Get back down here, it's just easier. Return. Return. Options. Where was I? FMGC, that's what it was. There we go. Inches. There we go. And then now let's go back to the performance pages. Go to the next phase. And set our 29.88 according to live weather. Yeah, I know enter destination day, that's what we're doing. Temperature is going to be 25. Pretty warm day. Winds, uh, it's 50 degrees at 5 miles. 050. Oh, I see. Why was I? I'm retarded. That made perfect sense. Uh, zero five zero. You see, you take one day off from flying, and this is the kind of junk you do. You come back on looking like a fool. All right, so zero five zero. We got all our information entered there. We're good to go. 
now. So the visibility is 6 plus. So we've got some clouds that we're going to be looking for. And let's see where we're at on our descent profile here. So we're sitting. We're looking for about 90 miles. That's what we're looking for. So this here, 160, we're at 120. For Donde, what do we need to be at Donde? Where's our. Oop, wrong one. Let's go to the star. I really hate this. Like, ugh. See what I mean? Like, there's nothing I can do about it. I have no choice but to restart it and let it do its stupid thing. And it's already done this once today. So it'll be updating that fast is obnoxious. So we can go ahead and start our descent. We're going to start taking us all the way down to about 4,000 feet. Going to manage descent, throttles to idle. Seatbelt signs back on as we're descending. I should have done that before. I actually just initiated the descent. I wonder how many people I just tossed around the cabin. Driving the cabin crew. No, we're on our way down. Inside 160, so we'll set it back down to 80. All right, and from this point, we are on our way in. It was looking good, still got 6,000 pounds. Approach page is set. Nav radios are set. And I will see you guys as we get closer to the approach. If anything goes um, awry, I will obviously start the recording and show you guys what's going on and show you guys how we resolve it. All right, so I had switched it, but realized I wasn't recording, so we're changing our altimeter. We dropped below 18,000 feet, and we decided it was 2988. There we go. Make sure we set our standby. There we go. Sense looking pretty good. We're right on track here. So there's Gouda from Gouda. We'll be coming on over. I'm going to go ahead and go to Donde. I'm going to go ahead and let it uh, come back around. Because uh, it looks like that's going to help out the descent. So if we come back out. We're about... Well, let me see if I can remove it. I don't know if it'll let me. It's been quite a pain in the butt, as you guys have seen. So it's clear. Yeah, see, but then it wraps us around back to Donde. Oh, man, I don't know why it does this. I'm, I'm hoping this is a bug, because it doesn't make any freaking sense. It really doesn't. But uh, we'll just figure it out. We'll switch to the approach mode once we get down in there. We should be okay. So we're going to be about 21 miles um, at about 10,000 feet, so that should put us right on track. So we're just going to maintain our descent. Go ahead and set us all the way down.
mandate is still in there. That's just too freaking weird. Like, no matter what I do, I cannot get rid of Donde. And it, I don't think it'll let me edit anything after the desal point, so... Whatever. We may just have to take over the aircraft a little sooner to avoid any issues with it today, or we'll fly manual heading, but we can turn on to the final heading fix, um, 095, and then we'll just manually manage it. It's not the end of the world. It's probably more accurate anyway, but I just don't know why it's doing that. That doesn't make any sense to me. By all respective purposes, it should be just clearing that waypoint out of the flight plan like we asked, and instead it created a user point, and then... Uh, pushed Donde to after the desal point, so I, I don't know what's going on there. It's very awkward. We can go ahead and activate our localizer. We're still ways away out. We shouldn't be picking that up at all yet, but we'll bring it up. Um, we're landing on a pretty short runway today, and this is my first approach on an attempt on this. So I'm going to go ahead and go for auto brakes medium on this. And again, I'm doing some of this a little early, but it's just because I'm a little nervous about the approach. Yes, I'm being a little bit of a sissy. Um, I already got my spoilers armed. Predicted wind show still on. Obviously, we leave all that as is. And then we'll start adjusting our flap speed, obviously, as we get much, much closer, or unless there's an issue that I need to address. But so far, the descent is looking good. Looks like the localizer got picked up. So we'll, again, we'll wait till we turn to the final approach heading. Why did you go into manage? That's interesting. Oh, it's just turning on the course, I see. I was like, that's really convenient timing, but with the orange dot there, it should not have started turning. I was like, what did I do? It's like it's jumping onto the localizer. Good. Still descending very nicely. We're 30 miles from touchdown, 7,000 feet. We want to be at 3,000 at 10 miles. So we may have to slow our descent just a little bit, but I don't think it's going to be a huge problem. But we're, on, we're uh, coming on to the final approach heading, so now that we've got that going, I'm going to go ahead and go straight into approach mode. Once the localizer is locked up, that's it. We're good. Which means it should ignore these goofy turnoffs that it's wanting to do. Decided I'd start a recording at this point, just sort of catching one up who wants to wanted to catch right to the approach phase. So what's happened is we've just turned on to the final approach fix. For anyone who skipped ahead, uh, we just turned on the final approach fix. I've uh, got the localizer on and act had the localizer on active. You can see we've acquired the localizer, and I've got us into the approach mode now. We're descending pretty well. We're looking for 3,000 feet at 10 miles. We're actually a little ahead of schedule. It looks like. So we may have to slow our descent, or yeah, our descent a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and go into vertical speed mode, and just to sort of slow that up just a little bit. Let's see here. We're looking there. We go. Let's give it a click. Just to slow it down just a little bit. We're descending a little too fast for what I'm looking for. Set the rotary back to 20 miles. Again, we're looking for 3,000 feet, about 10 miles. So right about here. And I have noticed that this thing's a little behind, so we're looking up here. These goofy waypoints for anyone who's, again, who skipped ahead, you'd have to go back and look at it, but it was weird issues with the MCDU or with pilot error, which is always possible when it comes to me. I'm getting better, but definitely not a pro, especially with oddball situations. 
the one-off things that don't pop up very much so Oh, okay, but well, we're below 10,000 feet. I don't have my lights on or anything. All right, so let's get the taxi lights on. Let's get the landing lights on. Runway turnoff lights on. We have sounded the cabin. Seatbelt signs are on. Everything else is good. So we're good there. Again, we're still a little ahead of schedule. So we'll take that down to about 500 feet. Approaching flaps one. Set the speed to auto mode. Looks like we're coming up on an altitude constraint. There it is, 2600. Once we pass the decel point, the aircraft will begin slowing down. Oh, there it is right there. We're now in landing mode, Cat 3 single. We're not going to really capture the glide slope as there really isn't one here. So as we're approaching 10 miles, you can see our speed's coming down here. We're going to go ahead and go stage flaps 1. Target speed is what it's looking for. It's going for 132 knots now, so we're going to continue to descend. We passed our altitude constraint. Just about, anyway. No, we're still under constraint. Disregard that. Alright, but we are inside 10 miles, so looking at about 8 miles now. Approaching. I'm going to go ahead and go flaps 2. Seven miles here. Let's go ahead and drop our gear. I'm nervous, guys. I'm nervous. All right, so for those of you skipping ahead to final approach, we are configured at flaps two. We're at uh, just under seven miles, gears down. Approach mode's active. You can see our current descent. We're about 900 feet per minute. Approaching full flaps location. So I'm gonna go flaps three now here. To a cabin check.
There's our altitude constraint. So distance three miles. Let's go full flaps. All right, and we're gonna see if I can screw this up, guys. Here we go. So, oops, kick the rudder. Didn't mean to kick the rudder. Bad time to kick the rudder. Oh, I bumped the throttle. Auto throttle's off, autopilot's off. A little off course here. Sink warning is going off like crazy. We're good. Don't sink. Turn the flight Don't directors sink. off. Don't sink. Don't sink. Don't sink. Don't sink. Oof. Don't sink. 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 Come on, baby. Don't sink. 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 Come on. Right. Reverse is out. Leave the reverse out a little longer. Yes, I know. Sorry. Very cool aircraft. I really do enjoy this thing. And that was a fun flight. The interim was boring. Um, obviously, you know, once that's the only drag about these airliners. Once you get to cruise out the two, they're just... <laughs> There really isn't much to do. Um, honestly, that's when I work on my guides and things. That's what got me started on it. Um, so the cool part is, you know, if you're going to do flight simming and you don't have an extra monitor, and I don't mean to assume that everyone's got money and things like that. I'm saying if, if, if it's a possibility and you do flight simulations and you've only got a single monitor, I highly recommend when time allows, when money allows, um, invest in at least a second monitor. I have three of them. And I know that sounds probably insane, but um, they really do make a huge difference when it comes to um, just the things you can do with flight simulation. You put a lot of your tools on the other monitor. You're working on other projects while you're while you're flying around. It just makes it nice. Okay, so I'm going to assume that we cut off in here, and that's what I'm going to do because I don't see. I always see airliners on YouTube coming out from out over at the end and literally turning at that last spot, but I would assume they park somewhere over here, right? Now I know the map probably isn't perfectly modeled either. So I guess what we'll do is just come right over here. So I don't want to wind up in the same situation I just was where I'm backing an A320 up when I shouldn't be. Let's get the uh, APU rolling. Now that we're off the runway, oh, come on, baby. Oof. And uh, we'll clean up the flaps. Flaps coming up. Landing lights down. Turn off lights off. All right, and just go ahead and blind anybody. Oh, TCAS off. Protective wind shear off. Weather radar is already turned off. I'm going to say that one of these locations... Oh, hey, there's a gate right there. Never mind. Told you, I've never been here. 
<laughs> I guess we'll move over to this one because we'll go where the tug is. Let's go where the tug is. Alright, so let's park the aircraft here. I don't know if any of these guys are actually going to marshal us in. Oh, hey, yeah, there he is right there. Look at that. I'll try to follow his lead. Ah! Trying to set the camera right. There we go. Set the parking brake. And APU should be good by now. Yep. Start the APU bleed. And let's get these engines turned off. Engine one, two off. Taxi light off and out of their face. Nice. We'll go ahead and continue. Right, spoilers are disarmed. Flaps are up. Cabin door unlocked. Predictive wind shear is off. TCAS is off. Transponder. Turn it off. MCD is ready for the next flight. We'll go ahead and just go back to flight plan. And let's see what else we got here. Uh, let's see. Let's go up top. Seatbelt signs can now be turned off. No smoking signs are off. APU's on. We can go ahead and set external power. Shut down the APU. Fuel pumps off, and we are ready for the next flight. Set the crew oxygen, air supply off, and a deer to leave on as they're aligned. Since the next flight is about to hop on board and get out of here, let's turn our beacon light off as well and the strobe light, which we should have turned off when we left the runway. But that's okay. And now all the last thing we need to do is get our jetway over here and deboard. And I use pushback helper for this. It makes it really handy. This is what it looks looks like. Excuse me. You just hit activate. It takes a second to connect. There you go. Hit the jetway button. And here it comes. And you can just close it from there. All right. And I hope, as always, guys, that you guys enjoyed this flight. It was a fun flight for me. The approach was definitely something cool. It was nice kind of not having the, uh, you know, the spoils of GPS or, or excuse me, of the ILS system. Um, as always, guys, if you guys are interested in the guide, um, this is actually an approach I'm going to use, I think, for the RNAV tutorial in the guide. Um, I think this is a perfect one to do that with. You really have no choice. You have to monitor your course. You have to watch your um, your altitude, you know, manually. This is a this is a perfect example of, of a good approach for that. So we'll see. I might use that. The only drag is is I would have to air start to make it any remotely effective and. Um, Microsoft Flight Simulator, in my opinion, doesn't particularly do well with air starts. Things just don't ever seem to go well. But anyway, I hope you guys are all doing very well. I hope you had a great Christmas holiday. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Have a wonderful week. And I hope you all get to just chill and be on vacation. Take care, guys.